Hi everyone. Today we've prepared for you an interesting video on show grooming of a golden retriever. We've been in self-isolation quarantine for two weeks now, getting frustrated from doing nothing. So today I'm really into it, eager to make this long-awaited video, and I know many of you have been looking forward to it. Our wonderful model today is Vavara. She hasn't had a wash for about a month and she hasn't been trimmed since January. Today we're going to wash, trim and show style her. We're going to use Hydra brand Brazilian cosmetics. They've been available on the Russian market for several months. We've tested them and really like them. So today we'll use them to wash Vavara. Let's take a look at our model's coat. It's fairly soiled, grey paws, flattened, scruffy and overgrown fur on her body and paws. To be honest, I have a soft spot for clean dogs. I like washing them and I believe that every dog living at home should be clean. First of all, it's good for your dog's health and it gives you a pleasant feeling when you're in contact with your dog, touching and patting it. If a dog's coat is dirty, it leaves a greasy residue on your hands, which personally I don't like at all, and neither do many of you, I'm sure. But for some reason, people think it's not good to wash dogs too often. I want to contradict this opinion. Indeed, you can wash dogs several times a month. Our standard procedure is that we give them a bath every 10 days or so, a day here, a day there, but 10 days is a normal interval at which you can wash a dog. It's very important that you use professional cosmetics. The use of a conditioner is highly essential. As I said today, I'm going to use Brazilian Hydra cosmetics. I really like their cleansing and moisturizing effect, which makes the dog's fur very pleasant to touch. You'll want to pat and hug her, which is very important when you share a house with your dog. Isn't that right, Mavara? We'll do the video in three stages, washing, styling, and trimming. There's a good girl. Let me say a few words about Hydra Cosmetics. Now I'll give you a quick overview of what treatments we've got with us today. Actually, almost all of them. Vavara hasn't had a wash for a long time and we want to use just about everything. Let's see. We've got cleansing shampoo, moisturizing shampoo, whitening shampoo, moisturizing conditioner, moisturizing mask and spray. Don't be scared by the amount of it. You can still do well with less, it's just, as I said, today I'm really into it and I want to use a lot of it for the best results. So, we'll put it all into use. Next, for the styling of a golden retriever's coat we'll need, in fact, just two things. A flat comb and a slicker brush. Later on I'll say more about that and we'll also go over the instruments we'll use for the trimming of a golden retriever. For today, we start with the clipping of claws and then we'll go for a wash. Clipping of claws is an important part of grooming and caring for your dog. It's essential that your dog gets used to it and that it becomes a repeated procedure. Despite not having had a wash for a month, Vavara has her claws done every week. We neatly clip around. It's very important that your clippers are sharp enough not to cause your dog any discomfort. We're done with the clippers and now I'm going to buff the claws with a nail grinder. Mm 
Murphy's Law in action. Olya decided to wash Favara and now it starts chucking it down. We're finished with the claws and we're going to wash. Today we're working in our Groom Craft project, self-grooming facilities. We opened them up specifically with the idea that dog owners would have the convenience of coming here with their dog or with their groomer. It's certainly a lot more efficient than washing your dog at home. Good girl, let's go. Timid speech, uncommon sense Could never make a good point land So when I lose my confidence We're in the washing area and we begin with To start with we thoroughly wet the dog's fur a golden retriever's coat is very thick with a dense undercoat. That's why we need to wet it thoroughly with warm water. Come here, Varia. Turn around. Good girl. Firstly, we apply deep cleansing, extreme, ultra dirty, clean shampoo. The dog we're working with now is very dirty and dusty. The coat's very greasy, so we need to degrease it. Hydra has another deep cleansing shampoo, but today we're going to use the one that will also degrease it as well. All professional cosmetic products are concentrated. This one is to be diluted with warm water in a 1 to 4 ratio. There's a handy measuring bottle where you can dilute the product in a 1 to 4 or 1 to 10 ratio. We'll use it for the application of conditioner. I've diluted the shampoo and I will apply it on the dog's coat with a sponge. This will help create more lather and evenly spread it over the coat. The shampoo foams up well and smells nice. This is the way we apply it, building up a lot of lather. Thorough cleaning of the dog's coat is always the first stage of the process. It's recommended to use a deep cleansing shampoo either every week if your dog gets dirty or at least once a month. Otherwise, moisturing shampoo should be used for home care washing or if you groom the dog for a show, use the shampoo with the coat effect you're trying to achieve. Such as volume, texture, moisturizing. That's really the main difference between home care and show grooming. We always use moisturizing shampoo at home. With golden retrievers, we often use moisturizing shampoos for show grooming as well. If a dog is in full coat with a thick undercoat, then there'll be enough volume anyway, which is more important for us to give it a shiny look and a pleasant to touch, neither too rough nor too soft feel. We're 
We've applied the first shampoo, built up the lather, given our dog a bit of a massage, and now we're ready to move on to the second stage of shampooing and rinse the first one. Our second stage will include moisturising as well as whitening optical effect shampoo. I love using this type of shampoo for all my golden retrievers coats, both light and darker in colour, because it gives them a certain glow. Again, both shampoos are highly concentrated and we'll use them in a 1 to 10 ratio. Now I'm mixing them half and half each, but again, the whitening one is only for show grooming. I wouldn't use it for home care washing. While rinsing the first shampoo, we can see the water turning dirty and the dog turning clean already. This is what I like about these cosmetics. Their shampoos make a dog clean even after the very first wash. Varya, turn round. Come here. It seems like our dog has already changed colour. We may not be very thorough with our first shampoo rinse, just rinse off the surface dirt. Then we apply the second shampoo. I use 50% moisturising and 50% whitening shampoo and add water. Work it through the coat, just as we did at the previous stage. And I want to leave it in for three to five minutes while I'm going to take care of her ears. Ear hygiene shouldn't be neglected. Dogs' ears need to be cleaned on a regular basis. Today I have the true iconic tea tree ear gel. Hydra has its own ear cleaning lotion, but since it hasn't reached our market yet, we're going to use the true iconic brand. We open up the ear, move aside the fur, apply a few drops of lotion on the inside ear surface, fold back the ear, massage it, do the same with the other one, and then remove whatever grime out of the ear. We're finished with the shampoos. We've given the fur a very good rinse, making sure there are no traces of shampoo left on the dog. And now we'll dilute the conditioner. I'm going to apply the moisturising conditioner, originally very concentrated, to be diluted in a 1 to 10 ratio with the help of the measuring bottle. We pour in warm water, lovely. Always use a conditioner, both for home and show grooming. Conditioner neutralises the shampoo, seals the hair's scales, thus preventing its damage and keeping it moisturised. So we apply the conditioner.
The bottle proves very handy in spreading the treatment evenly over the dog's coat. And now we're going to apply a mask. I will use it only, thank you, Varia, on the fur on her back, where, in my opinion, it feels slightly rough. So I want to moisturize it even more, give it nutrition. What I've got here with me is a flash thermo active mask. It's a 90 second mask with a deep moisturizing and nutritional effect. So we'll apply it to the back area only. I squeeze and smear a small amount of the mask onto my palms and apply it. It feels good and pleasantly greasy in my hands. Now we shall wait 90 seconds or a little longer and we'll rinse everything off. In the previous videos, I already said that after the wash, while still in the washing area, I use super absorbent towels to pat the wet fur and blow out excess water and hairs, which makes it easier to clean up afterwards. Then we move over to the grooming table to style our dog's coat. What tools do we need to dry a golden retriever's coat? A slicker brush, they can be of different kinds, curvy and flat, wide and narrow. And a flat comb. These are about all the tools we'll need and there should be nothing extra around. Sometimes we may use a natural bristle brush to give the fur a turn in the right direction, but that depends on your dog's fur type. Vavara has my favourite fur type, a fairly short and straight overcoat and a well-developed undercoat. This is an easy to care for fur that can be beautifully styled without much effort. Today I'll demonstrate the way I style this kind of coat and it doesn't mean that such styling will necessarily suit all golden retrievers, so we're working on this particular one. To begin with, I blow dry the fur closest to the skin. This will give volume to her coat from the inside. This is very important because the golden retriever has a well-developed undercoat. It's not an easy job and I always use a two motor compressor for it. It's a useful tool and will make your life easier.
By doing all this, I managed to give the coat an extra volume and blow dry the undercoat and the fur from the inside really well. You must bear in mind not to over dry the coat and have enough time to style the fur in the desired direction. What I mean is that this way of drying will not do for dogs with very wavy coats. I've slightly dried Vivara's coat and now I want to sprinkle her with a finished spray for a sleek look. It will also give a smoothing effect and a thermo protection. Just lightly spray it over. And continue drying. We're finished with the drying. The direction in which we blow dry the dog's coat is very important. As a result, you should have a very neat dog. The neater the dog, the easier will be the trimming. The dog should have fluffy pants and tail, even frill, looking down on sides and back area from neck to croup. The chest should have enough volume to it. Now we'll move over to another table and we'll start the trimming. Good girl, let's go. Good girl, turn around. Good girl. What tools do we need to trim a golden retriever? Three types of scissors, short and straight ones. Mine have micro notch blades for extra sharpness to be used on paws. Thinning ones and curved ones for tail and ears. Most of my scissors are by Nick Contos. I also have a trimmer for paws, a nail grinder that we've already used, two types of de-shedding tools to comb through fur on the neck, slicker brushes and a comb. My favourite combs are Greyhound. They have an anti-static effect and smart kind of teeth which comb a double coat very well and they're very handy. And now we move on to the trimming. Let me start off by saying that there are different styles of trimmings, show and home trimmings. They're all different and each dog is looking for their particular style just like women are at a salon. You can practice by trying something and looking at the result 
but always see where you want to trim more fur or less fur. You'll experiment before you achieve that special style which will suit your dog. In various cases, we as well had experimented for a long time before we figured out which style I personally liked for her. Having said that, now I'll demonstrate how I trim this particular dog and unfortunately I can't guarantee this style will necessarily suit your dog, but try it anyway. I always begin with the paws as I do prefer neat, well-groomed paws. No matter whether I work on show or home grooming, the paws must be done immaculately. That's part of a dog's hygiene procedure. I'm moving the table higher up. It's very convenient and I don't need to bend down. And I begin with the trimmer. First removing any fur in between the toe pads. No dog needs any fur there, especially when it's muddy outside. Dirt gets stuck in it. Now we're living through the lime tree season and the sap sticks on it as well. So I shave everything off here. You can do it without a trimmer and work on paws with just scissors, but I find the trimmer easier and handier. Next, I will use straight scissors. As I said, mine have a micro notch on the blades and this allows for a sharper and more precise cut. I always like to make claws visible. First, I do a notch here. We're trying to create a round, feline-like paw. Paws differ and you need to adjust your trimming technique to each dog's paw type. Next, I pull out the fur from in between the toes and cut it off. I do that with straight scissors. You can also do it with thinners. Then, lift the fur with your slicker brush to trim all the excess with thinning scissors.
Since I love beautiful, well-groomed paws, I can spend a long time working on them. The fur on Golden Retriever's paws grows very quickly, so with neat paws like these, in two weeks' time you will find yourself working on them again. For home grooming, I can cut even shorter and make the claw even more bare, but for show grooming, this is short enough. This is the way we do all four paws. We're now finished with three paws and we're working on the fourth one. I would also like to stress that it's important we clip the claws first, otherwise you'll have to re-trim the paws over again. We shaped the paw, removed excess fur, and now we just finish off. We're finished with all four paws now. Next, we move on to the trimming. I'd like to say that I try to trim a dog ready for a show a week to ten days in advance. The coat will grow a little, evening out the scissor tracks, and the dog will have a more natural look. In general, I prefer a more natural look for golden retrievers. I don't like them over-groomed. Of course, fashions change, styles change. A natural, slightly dishevelled look that's good for one dog may not suit another who'd need a more subtle trim. Speaking of show grooming, a lot depends on where the show takes place and who the judges are. The tendency is the further west and closer to the UK, the more natural the look should be. In Russia, they tend to like more sophisticated grooming. Personally, I prefer for a golden retriever to keep a more natural look. In fact, I do paws shortest of all. Now we'll trim the hocks and the pants. Again, it de all depends on the type of coat. On Vavara's straight and fairly short type, you'll trim less. On dogs with long, wavy coats, you'll have to trim off more. In Vavara's case, we'll leave on the maximum amount of coat we can leave here. And don't be afraid to leave more of it. It's more important not to overdo it. We move on to the trimming. Starting with the hocks, I do them with curved scissors, just because I like it this way. I lift the leg, comb the fur, Trim the heels. I give it more of a semicircle shape. You can also trim them along a straight line. It all depends on the dog's angulated shape and on what effect you're trying to achieve. Cut 
comb, lift. And finish off with thinners. We've got a very neat hock now. Next to the pants. Just make them neater. Trim off excess undercoat on the pelvis. I trim and comb through, removing only the inner coat. Now I slightly open the hock joint, she has rather overgrown fur here and if we trim it, it'll highlight the angulation, just don't overdo it. We're finished with the pants and now we'll trim the tail. A golden retriever's tail should have a feather shape and reach down to the hock joint. Usually tails are longer. I run my fingers down the tail to feel the end, leave a one to one and a half centimetre margin and cut off this excess brush with curved scissors. That's the moment when most owners hold their breath. They tend to regard their dog's tail as his main asset. Ready now. We lift the tail, comb and shape it, trimming from both sides, that's a must. Comb again. Take a good look. That's good for now. We'll come back to it later for a fresh look. We are moving to the forelegs and looking at the pastern. Golden retrievers have a sloping pastern and that's the shape we follow. I do it with straight scissors but thinning scissors can also be used. Take a look. and create the line you want with curved scissors. Mm -hmm. 
featherings. In this particular case, I'm not going to do them at all. Just touch up and remove split ends to freshen up the coat. Hers are fairly short, so I see no sense in trimming them even shorter. Some dogs have feathers down to the floor. Then you need to trim them, but not in this case. Frill and lower chest. I prefer not to touch them at all, if possible. The golden retriever must preserve a natural look. Some international and British judges really hate to see a straight line cut down under. It may get you a very good or even a lower mark. If the frill is not floor length or lopsided, then we don't touch it at all. Same is true for the hips and lower chest. If the frill is too long, like in the case of many veteran dogs, then you can trim it about a month in advance. Then it will have a chance to grow back to a more natural look. Again, only if it's absolutely necessary to trim it at all. I prefer to shave off the fur inside the ear here. It will help the ear to breathe better. But bear in mind that those dogs who are not used to having short hair will begin by shaking their ears. Don't worry, they'll get used to it and stop shaking their heads. Then we cut to form the outline. Firstly, I take a look to see how long the ear is, as they can be short and long in relation to the head. Trim the tip and round it up, then the inner part of the ear. You can cut it short because we don't want any fur here. On the outer side, I do one third only either with straight or thinning scissors. We leave this part, so-called earrings. They are very becoming to golden retrievers. There are dogs who have too much fur here. Then you can thin it, but not completely. Then I take thinning scissors and remove some fur volume from behind the ear where we don't need it. There can be more and less fluffy ears. Still, some fur should be left on as we don't want to create a Labrador expression. Trim off from behind the ear. Comb through and that's about it. Remove the cheek hair. Thin it. No need for a lot of hair here either. After you're finished with the ears, do look at the general expression. Here, Varia. Good girl. So, we leave some fur over here. Now, on to trimming the neck, the most difficult and interesting part. 
Brush up the fur. Look at the dog and decide upon the line you want to create. I like to see it smooth. I find a blade bone and draw a line down the blade. Go two fingers up and this will be our starting point. I'll do a notch here as a mark for myself. Then I take my de-shedding tools and remove excess undercoat on the lower and upper part of the neck. The more thorough you do it, the easier it will be to trim it later on. We need to create a nice line here and to stress the chest. Be careful when you trim at the joint, not to create a hole or a bald patch, and then trim the blade. We want a smooth line and no sharp edges. You can step aside and take a look. The line's already there, you can see it. We'll finish it off without trimming too much. I comb the fur up to see how long it is. And try to create a smooth line here from the very short fur up the neck to longer and longer layers down. Always comb through, especially if you don't feel very confident. Do a couple of cuts, comb and take a look. We always trim the coat along the growth line, not across, to avoid making bald spots. Right here, the fur is also short. I wish it were longer, but oh well. I'll leave it as it is for a natural look. Look at our super beauty, Vavara. I'm very happy with the result. Love her coat. She used to be greyish and dirty and now she's of a beautiful golden colour. Her coat is very pleasant to touch. You want to pat and hug her. A real pleasure of a dog to live with. We've groomed her in a show style, trying not to overdo it, but giving her a more natural look. 
Still, we have a very neat dog now. Thank you for your attention. I hope that both dog owners and professional groomers have found the video useful. Do comment on what else you'd like to see. Sign up for our channel, like us, set up an alarm not to miss anything. Bye!